Hey everybody, Mighty Man Handyman here, and I'm at my house today here in Grand Junction. It's another beautiful day, of course, always in Grand Junction. Actually, it's a little cloudy, but it's okay. Uh, anyways, it's better than a lot of places. So, we are here today with Dan, and he is the chimney doctor here in Grand Junction, Colorado. And so we're going to be talking to him about, well, chimneys. So, right. and, well, and everything else that goes with it. So, well, so thanks. tell us a little bit about yourself really quick. Um, thanks for having me out. Um, it, uh, you know, um, chimneys are, it's nothing I ever thought I'd do, that's for sure. Nobody, I think, ever grows up thinking I'm going to be a chimney sweep. That's not something that uh, ever crossed my mind. I didn't know people did it. And moved out here to, to get married and met my wife, and she lived here. And, and so I came out here knowing I could find work and, and stumbled into an apprenticeship, I guess you'd say, with a 30-plus year master chimney sweep. Um, and after working with him for about three years, an opportunity came up to, to buy out um, one of the competitors from up in Rifle. And so I talked to them and, and figured some things out, and, and we kind of parted ways at that point. And so for the last three years, we've just kind of been nonstop pursuing education and trying to learn as much as we can, um, not only about how to clean chimneys, but how to inspect them and make sure that they're actually safe to be burnt. Um, and it's, it's been, I don't know, it's been a lot of fun. Yeah, and you do more than chimneys, do Yeah, so we do um, chimneys, we clean, uh, we inspect, repair, service, sweep, install, and replace uh, wood, pellet, and gas appliances. Uh, I guess not so much, we clean furnace and boilers, but we don't replace them, but we do a lot with, I mean, fireplaces, uh, stoves, inserts, um, and we everything we do is based on inspections to make sure they're safe, and if not, how to make them safe, and then how to how to make them better and make them last longer and, and burn better and make people, you know, allow them to keep their homes safe and their families warm. So yeah. Now something uh, I learned here a couple weeks ago. I did a, a, a fireplace and they converted it and put a pellet stove in there. We had to pull the pellet stove out to put the new tile around the fireplace. And when I did that, I noticed there's this little cup down at the bottom and it's full of ash. So pellet stoves have to be serviced too, don't they? Yeah, pellet stoves need to be serviced and and. Usually, so a pellet stove is a little more involved than I guess you'd say, a, to some extent, a wood or a gas. Um, wood, wood stoves, you need to clean every couple cords of wood that you burn. So if you burn four or five cords, it should probably be cleaned two or three times a year. Um, whereas a pellet stove, it'll have specific instructions in the manuals for uh, weekly and monthly cleanings. And then once a year, a professional like us and someone who's certified should be brought in to do a full in-depth cleaning that gets into all the back channels that all those other cleanings don't quite reach. Oh, so. The light went off. That's okay. Okay, okay. so there you go, guys. I did not know pellet stoves actually had to be serviced, and I, I actually figured that out when I pulled that one out. I said, hey, did you know there's a little catch thing here with all this ash in it? And I sucked it out with the vacuum form, oh, yeah. and I said, you probably should get this looked at and see if it needs more cleaning. I don't. I, I just cleaned out that spot. And, then, and if people are one. if people are looking at getting a pellet pellet stove or a pellet insert, <coughs> um, they're they're different. They're a whole different animal. It, it's like apples to oranges with wood burning or gas or pellet. Uh, pellets a lot more like an appliance. It's something that is going to need service. It has blowers and motors. Parts are going to break. Uh, and it, so wherever you buy it, it's a good idea to buy it with a dealer that you know will help you when it needs service and come out and do it, or at least walk you through how to do some of it on your own if you want to save some money. Yeah. Um, but that's important. So. Yeah, there you go. I, pellet stoves are, I, I've noticed more and more of them being used around everywhere anymore. It seems like oh, they're yeah, becoming they're... way more popular than everything else. And, and I always thought, looked at them and thought, hey, these things are just simple, no fuss, dump in your pellets and it's done. But I guess not. So there you go, guys. So now... Let's talk about actual wood burning chimneys because there's okay. quite a few in the valley, isn't there? Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of them. I'd say by far um, the thing we work on the most is we inspect wood burning chimneys for safety or for installing an insert or upgrading them or refacing them, doing things like that. Yeah. Oh, so you reface them too, huh? Uh, we okay. can, yeah. One of, okay. one of our guys, he's been, he was a mason for 20 years and retired from doing that. He was just getting beat up and he started working with us and he's... Uh, he, if, now that he's in the office, now he's like, oh, can we reface? I'll go help. So he's excited to get back out there um, sometimes if need be, but uh, he's busy, so we refer a lot of work out too. For yeah, that, so. but there you go. So now what are some of the signs that your chimney may need you to come out and look at? Um, so if you have a wood-burning fireplace and you're burning it, and you, um, you know, the easiest thing to do is if you start to notice that when you light your fires, it doesn't draw as well as it used to and it's smoking back into the house or it just takes it a little longer to kind of feel like it's working right. If, if you're smelling smoke, that's usually a sign that something in your system isn't working right. Whether 
um, your chimney is just due to the way your house is situated um, your chimney if like say you have a furnace and a dryer and a bathroom fan and a kitchen exhaust fan they're all sucking air out of your house and you have just had your house re-suckoed so it's sealed and insulated really good what can happen is if there's not enough makeup air in the house or air coming into your house those appliances can actually overpower your chimney and pull cold air into your house just like an air intake um, and so you know if you are um, if, if you experience that where you get in front of your chimney and you're like man there's just cold air coming down um, it, it may be okay depending on the way it's set up and it, it may be a downdraft that's caused by your house and so you go to light a fire and it smokes up your house and you hate your fireplace mm -hmm. um, there are ways that we can fix that um, I, I never thought about the stucco <laughs> situation where you seal the house up tighter yeah. and, and you turn your chimney into a draft I never thought about that so yeah, so there's something, guys, and lots of people are getting their houses stuck with all the time around here. So, and lots of houses with fireplaces that changes the changes the makeup of the house, really. It, so, oh, it yeah. changes it dramatically, and we've had to get real good at, at explaining that because if they hire us to come out and fix their chimney and we clean it and inspect it and here are these problems that we can work on addressing, but it still doesn't work right. A lot of times, a chimney working properly doesn't necessarily have to do with it being clean. It has to do with other issues like the height or if you have this big masonry structure um, on the north side of the home, or I guess this way, on the north side of the home where it doesn't get any sun, and so your chimney stays ice cold all day. It never warms up, and so it's really hard to start, and you got to fight with it all the time. <coughs> you know? um, yeah. Another thing I'd say to look for is if you look in your fireplace and on the back of your fireplace, or if, if you ever, when it's not working, when you reach in to close the damper, look up in there with a the light, and you see you know, fluffy stuff hanging off the edges, or, or even worse, if you see a shiny black glaze in there, um, that is creosote, and creosote is highly combustible, um, and it, you know, that's where chimney fires come from. And creosote starts at the bottom and works its way up to the top of the chimney. And so if you can see it at the top, when you get up on your roof and you're doing swamp coolers or leaves or, or doing anything, and you see black creosote at the top, it means it will be all the way up into there. It's way past time for a cleaning. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 Now, speaking of that, why they're on top of the roof if they're doing some swamp cooler stuff? Is there any visual things they should look at? I know I've been on a couple of roofs and I've looked at, at chimneys and that concrete cap is cracked in a couple of places. I mean, is that something they should start worrying about? Um, that's definitely something to keep in mind. So, so bricks, um, when they're waterproofed, are pretty impervious to, to water and moisture getting inside of them. But really, you want to think of bricks like it's a giant stack of sponges. And bricks, and they absorb moisture. And so if you have a cracked crown or your mortar joints are washing away, um, or you know, even have bricks that look like they've kind of exploded off a little bit or they're cracked themselves, um, that's a sign that water has gotten in there. It's been long enough without waterproofing that, that they're getting damaged. And you can actually have water. Uh, we've had chimneys in basements where the basement has flooded around the fireplace. And when you get up on top, it's not that the flashing's bad or anything else. It's that the water, the brick is so packed with moisture that it has just seeped through and started to leak out of the bottom of it. Well, that's and, a serious problem there. And you don't think about that. Yeah. Um, but to fix it, you know, you come in and we can redo mortar joints and either uh, do a new concrete crown. A lot of times we'll end up, we can do a, a big, um, I guess you'd say a big chase cover, a big cap that covers the whole crown and the chimney and it keeps all moisture off the whole top of the chimney. And then once you waterproof it and redo the flashing, uh, you've really eliminated a lot of the major damage that comes because you start getting water damage and, you know, you got to re-sheet rock and you got to re-roof and... Mm -hmm. You get into some some pretty major repairs at that point. So brick chimney once it's built isn't just done. It it needs maintenance too, just like the rest of the house. So yeah, yeah we um, a lot of the chimneys we look at here, especially in, in the downtown parts of Grand Junction, um, they haven't been looked at in, in thirty years. You know, Jeff and and yeah, we, when you haven't had them looked at in thirty years, and my guys always feel bad when they got to tell people, hey, there's some stuff that needs to be worked on, but. Our whole goal is just to be honest and let you know the state of your chimney and where it's at. And, yeah. and you know, if, if we don't fix it, who can? And then what can be done to, yeah. to keep your home good? Yeah, I was on the roof last year, and I was, I think it was a swamp cooler and some other stuff. I was looking at some missing shingles, and I just happened to look up the chimney, and I walked over there, and literally that, you know, concrete cap, I literally just stuck my finger and went, Pfft. it was just <laughs> dust. It was literally just lime dust that just swept away, and I was like, I took a picture of it, took it down to him, and said, guys, that's bad. You're just letting water pour into your house. There's nothing there to protect you. So they, they got that fixed. But, uh, yeah, so 
there's things to make. So we've done, let's see, pellet stoves and chimneys. What else? You well, got, you can, can I say one more? But oh, you, you made me think of something there with that. Um, if you're ever up on your roof and you look down in your chimney and you notice that there's no clay flue tiles, that there is just... Brick. Um, there's just brick and, you're, and you look down there and you think oh it's just one layer of brick um, if there's ever a, a chimney fire in there from creosote or anything else um, it's only separated from usually framing in your attic which won't need its clearance it's supposed mm -hmm. to be two inches away and it'll be separated from it by one four inch layer of brick and if you haven't had a cap and you've had water running down the inside of that um, we've gotten in attics where I can see through I can see from the attic through into the chimney where I can see the creosote. And so if they ever had a fire, it can come up and jet right through those cracks in the mortar into the attic. Whoosh. And the house is gone. And yeah. you know, fire departments a lot of times say, oh, it was accidental, it was a chimney fire. And, and really it's just a result of not having your chimney repaired and inspected regularly. Mm -hmm. to and just an old design yeah. chimney. Old oh, design yeah. chimneys, lots of Now you can fix that, you can, you can put a liner in those usually. Um, so we, to put liners in, uh, most chimneys we can reline. There are some systems that um, we can fix most things. Uh, a, a problem we commonly run into is, is when they're forming up a fireplace, they'll put wood under the hearth, set the brick on top of it, and they'll even frame under the fireplace with the floor joists yeah. and set the fireplace, and the fireplace will overheat it and cook it. And so speaking of a liner, well, as long as there's four inches of solid masonry, uh, we can run an insulated stainless steel liner down there and hook it up, and, and there's some ways we can rip out and remove um, fireboxes and fireplaces, the part you see. If, yeah. they, if they have wood under them, we can pull those out and actually replace that with something Some that's listed something. to sit on yeah. top of. Or steel, yeah, something that, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's ways to make old chimneys usable and safe again. So if you got a chimney and you're like, oh, I don't know if I want to use this, you know, call them out for inspection. What, and if, um, and, and I'd highly recommend it if you guys have chimneys that you haven't had inspected or you've bought a house, or if you're going to buy a house, um, pay to have the house inspected properly and have a thorough in our industry, they call it a level two inspection, um, because if, if you go and you have uh, a home inspector come out, and, and our plan this spring is to hopefully do a course for home inspectors um, for things that they do, because legally home inspectors are required to, uh, th there's a, a small list of things they have to check with the fireplace. They check and make sure the damper operates, there's no blockages, and that there's a cap on top. That's and right. as far as was it built properly, does it meet clearances, you know, they might tell you it needs cleaning, but are the flue tiles cracked? Is there holes in the attic? Yeah. Um, things like that, they're not necessarily required to say, and, yeah. and, or no. Or and no, so, yeah. So they don't know the standard that is required for a chimney to actually properly function, I guess, and, is what it is. And, and I have nothing against home inspectors. I think they yeah. do a great job, but like my home inspector, when I bought my house, he was a roofer. And so he caught a ton of stuff with my roof that I didn't even know about. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I mean, we go to hundreds of hours of education every year just on chimneys. Mm -hmm. And when you know when you buy a house and you want it looked at, um, please get it inspected because there's my my least favorite conversations are ones with an excited new homeowner four or five months in the house and we look at it and we're like, well, um, I tell you. we got to re replace it. And <laughs> there's rare occasions when we can't fix them because of. You know, they've ran wood it. right through the middle of the chimney, and you yeah. open it up, and you're like, we can't fix this, mm -hmm. and we got to replace it. But usually there's a way to fix it and, and make it safe. That's awesome. That's good to know. So now you do gas fireplaces, too. So what do you do on those? So, um, so on, on gas service, I think gas has kind of taken over. Um, they're you know, a little stricter on wood and pollutants in the air here, and so gas is, is taken over heavily. Um, you know, we end up installing quite a bit, but really where we... We end up repairing a lot, um, and then also um, just doing a lot of standard services on them. Um, so normally, like if somebody calls with a gas appliance, we would come out, and on the first service, we'd go through the whole thing. I mean, we'll take the glass off, take all the logs out, all the embers and the rock in there. We'll usually take the burners off and blow everything out. We'll blow through the air channels of it, um, and if it needs touch-up paint, we'll touch it up. Um, our goal is to go through everything we can and make it run and operate like as new as possible. You know, and, and a lot of times we get comments, wow, I didn't know it was that dirty. <laughs> or I haven't had that clean in 20 years. It's never looked like that. Yeah. yeah and, so. and that's what we want is, is homeowners that like to see their fireplace. They like to run it. Yeah. And then, oh, yeah. you know, with that, we'll get up in the attic and make sure that uh, it meets its clearances to, to insulation. I'd say gas fireplaces are their number one problem um, as far as being installed improperly is that, They'll get installed, and it won't even be the guy who installed the fireplace's fault. 
Um, insulation guys. The insulation guys will come along, and the framers who framed it, they're supposed to be a, a what we call a fire stop, and it's a, a piece of wood and then a piece of metal around the pipe to keep clearance mm -hmm. that yeah. keeps all insulation from falling down in, inside your wall, essentially, mm -hmm. on top of your unit. And we'll yeah. get up in the attic and crawl over there, and Just there's it's a wide open right hole, and, yeah. and we found uh, fireplaces that are buried in combustible insulation. Yeah. And it's only a matter of time at that point. And so we'll, we'll, yeah. we'll actually go over and crawl down in there behind the wall Back and pull something. it all out yeah. and oh, reconstruct it. Mm. And I know. I, I, I get up in attics all the time. That's no fun if you have to pull the insulation <laughs> back out. It's easy to put it in. Taking it back out is a pain in the neck. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's something you guys want to watch. If you're having a house built, that's something you, now you know. <laughs> so, yeah, clearances, guys. It's all about clearances. So, you know, this fireplace right here, that's in a box mounted on the outside of the house, completely separate from the rest of the house. So it's in its own little encapsulation, runs all the way up, empties out the top. So yeah, I figured that looking at it, and that's sometimes that's one of the safer ways to do it because you can mm -hmm. totally isolate it from the house. Yeah, and yeah. The, and and fire stops. The reason they're there and they're with all any chimney as it comes up through a house. Um, a fire stop is a I guess you'd say it's a fail safe to some extent where yeah. if if your fireplace malfunctions and lights something on fire in the wall. It buys you 15 minutes to see the paint melt and see something happen, whereas if, if there's no fire stop in there um, and something behind your wall lights on fire, it burns straight up and into your attic and your house burns from the top down. And so usually at that point, people don't know it's on fire till their ceiling starts falling in or a neighbor knocks on their door. And, and that's, you know, so when we see those, we're very... We're, we're very Conscious about making sure you gotta get this fixed. Yeah, now, now everybody on the outside are going, oh no way. That actually happened in my dad's house. So he had a wood burner in there, and then we put an addition onto the house, and he had run ductwork up over the attic and into the new addition. And basically, what happened was electricity went out, so the blower wasn't blowing on the furnace anymore. But he was still using the wood, and the heat was raising up into that one pipe. And getting trapped up in there, and it got super hot to the point that it was laying on top of the ceiling joists, and it actually ignited the ceiling joists. And it started burning those before they ever noticed. They were smelling some smoke, and they're like, eh, it's just the fireplace. It, it finally got to where it was burning in the attic. So it didn't burn the whole house down, but it caused quite a bit of damage. So guys... When we talk about that, that's a real deal. It can happen. I've actually seen it. <laughs> and, it so. uh, and, and Jeff, that brings up a great, a great point that I think is a, it's at the heart of everything we do as chimney inspectors when we look at is um, there's a process they call pyrolysis. And you can, you can look it up, and there's a lot out there on it. Um, but pyrolysis is it's a, it's a chemical change in wood or any combustible material when it's heated above 200 degrees. Now, as you know, wood is not going to ignite at 200 degrees. Um, it'll, it might burn a little bit, things might happen, yeah. but what happens is, due to the chemical change, um, wood's ignition point, with continued exposure to temperatures at 200 degrees or higher, the ignition point drops, and it can actually drop as low as 200 degrees, and when those two meet, it just spontaneously Whoosh. ignites on the other side of whatever it's on. And so, when we look at a house, and you know, people tell us all the time, um, well, my stove's been here for 25 years, and, and it, you know, so you say it's too close to the wall, but it's been here for 25 years. And we always tell them the problem is pyrolysis. And, and I can't tell you how far along it is in that process. And it, it may never ignite. But all I know is based on the measurements and the tests they've done, they tested the stove to have 14 inches of clearance. It's at 9 inches. And in the testing, they proved that it gets hot enough to cause pyrolysis. Somewhere down the road. And if you keep burning it somewhere down the road... You know, it'll just happen. And, and I can't in good conscience not say anything to you and let you just keep going. And, and everybody can keep burning what they want. It's America. It's a free yeah. country. I can't red tag your appliance. Yeah. I didn't know that. Actually, that's something I just learned. I know, I know you know, there's, there's clearances. And if I do something, I always try to meet clearances. But I didn't, I didn't know stuff would change over time. Continue exposure would actually cause it to change to where it would would ignite like that. That's something new I learned. So there you go, guys. I learned something new today, too. So, um, so okay. Let's just, uh, let's see what we, what else do you cover? You've got, we've got the gas, we've got the pellet, we've got regular chimneys. Um, I got a question for you. And this is something I've seen a lot around here in town. There's a lot of houses here that don't have chimney caps. Why is that? Um, just don't get enough rain here so they don't think it's needed? Or what's the story with that? Well, they, you know, I think a lot of times they, they just haven't had them for years. They were built without chimney caps. There hasn't been one for years. 
Um, and so they just don't have them up there. And unless they buy the house and the home inspector says, hey, you need a screen up there yeah. or something up there, people don't think about it. And okay. if, if they're not using it, they really don't think about it. And it okay. just continues to deteriorate. Yeah. You know, caps are important. Mm -hmm. um, well, I came from Missouri. But it rains a lot in Missouri. <laughs> it rains a lot. If you don't have a cap, you'll, you'll, you'll have water pouring out of your fireplace. And, and even with caps, sometimes when water, rain comes in sideways, you still have it coming out of chimney. So, yeah. So. Uh, well, so one, an, an important consideration with caps on chimneys, and, um, and I'll clarify this kind of two ways. One, um, caps are important because when rain, especially if you have creosote, when rain mixes with creosote, it form, forms a very uh, acidic concentration, and it'll actually eat away at mortar and brick and everything that's oh, in wow. your chimney. And so the more water you get in your chimney, the faster it deteriorates over time. And then the more chance there's bigger problems we have to address when it's looked at properly. Um, on the other hand, when people call and say, hey, we just we want to get a chimney cap uh, based on the standards in our industry. If we go and look at a, a chimney to just install a cap, we're required to do a certain level of inspection. Yeah. And from that inspection, we usually have either, hey, we can put a cap on and no problem and your chimney's up to code and everything's good. Or... We have, well, there's some issues, and if you really want to put a cap on, um, putting a cap, just a normal cap, won't address your issues, but if we address your issues, we can do a cap with it and, and know that you'll be safe at the same time. Cool. So, so okay, uh, so we're getting towards the end of the burning season, really, but what's a good time to start inspecting your chimneys? I mean, any time's a good time, but... Yeah, and, um, if, if it hasn't been inspected in the, you know, in the last year or since before last burn season um, I'd highly recommend doing it doing it now because the longer you go without inspecting a chimney uh, the more chance there is that those everything has added up it's actually the, the worst time to uh, for chimney fires is actually usually the first fire people light and the two worst days of the year are Thanksgiving and Christmas because people who who don't light their fires uh, they have all their family there, they get a good big fire going, and it lights the creosote in the smoke chamber, which takes off through the chimney and scares everybody to death. Um, and, it, you know, it, so if otherwise, it, so it, if you haven't had it done, please get it done. Yeah. Um, if you're doing it regularly, um, we highly recommend it. One, if your chimney does anything weird, if it's behaving oddly, call and get it looked at. Um, and don't use it. And probably. don't use it. Don't yeah, use stop it. Stop using it. <laughs> call and get it looked at. But, but we, it's so like... On our end, depending on how busy we get in the winter, we can be booked out three weeks to six weeks, and sometimes yeah. a couple months. Yeah. And so we highly recommend people call starting about May when you're really starting to think, oh, yeah, i got to get the garden ready and get out and get the yard set up and get things going there. It's a great time to do your chimney because when we inspect it or clean it, um, we're not dealing with downdrafts from cold weather. Everything updrafts nicely. There's not snow on roofs, especially if you have tall chimneys. Um, and it's a, it's a chance to... To look at it, inspect it, and then if there's issues, um, we can repair it during the summer when when we have a little more time and better weather to fix it properly. Because there are some repairs we actually can't do in when it's winter. cold. Well, you we, can't mix mortar in, in, in winter time because you, you can't freeze. Yeah, it, so it doesn't work. You know, and yeah. there's a lot of things we just when we find them wrong in the winter. Sometimes people say, well, I just won't use it till spring, and please come fix it then, Yeah, because I yeah. can't do anything else. So spring's the best time to actually get your fireplace inspected. I would thought fall. So there, there you go, guys. So, <laughs> and, and actually, that makes perfectly good sense. Get it done springtime. So here in the next, what, three months, guys, start calling it in, get your get your inspections ready, and you'll be good to go for next winter. You know? Yeah. And, and do, you, do, you, do you suggest doing a little pre-inspection before wintertime, though? Or if um, you've done it in May, it's good to go. If you've done it in May and, and there's a cap up top so animals and things can't get in there, uh, you should normally be good to go unless something weird is going on or, or you're like, I hear some growling behind my damper. You know, then maybe you ought to have a... We've, we've pulled out raccoons and snakes and birds. And, um, <laughs> That's not fun. <laughs> there, it's not fun when they're alive, but it's also not fun when they're dead. So if you no. hear something in there, give someone a call. And, yeah, and we'll yeah. Get, it get it before it starts <laughs> yeah. stinking. Huh? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We have a couple questions. Okay, yeah, shoot. Okay, Kathleen would like to know, she says, I have a gas dryer that vents under my house quite a distance to the outside. Do you clean the vent system on dryers? Yes, yeah, so we actually, we do a lot with dryers. Um, we're certified by the Chimney Safety Institute of America for uh, not only chimneys, but also for dryer vents as well. Um, and dryers that go down into the house and then out, uh, the key is that you never want a dryer to vent 
um, into a crawl space or into an attic. Uh, we repair them all the time and you, we, we'll get down there and the whole crawl space will be filled with lint. It's been venting down there for 20 years and it's a huge fire hazard that we have to remove and pull stuff out of. I've been a few of those. Yeah, I can, um, yeah, I can test that. And, on, and we have, so there's a, and I, without naming names, there's a, a big apartment complex we're working on right now that has 400 plus units and every single one of those, the, all of their attics are full of insulation or full of uh, dryer lint. vent lint mm -hmm. uh, because they weren't properly terminated. Mm -hmm. uh, and so they just filled the attics. And so we're in the process of ripping all those out and replacing them. Um, mm -hmm. But cleaning them uh, for homeowners to give you an idea on recommendations for dryer vents are a little different. In a residential setting, they should probably be inspected and cleaned every two to three years. Um, and we do have actually the. Um, you know, technology is infiltrating everything we do. And so one of the suppliers we deal a lot with, they actually have a, um, they call it a lint alert, and you can look them up online. And what it is, is it's a little device that plugs into your outlet near your dryer. Um, and there's a tube that runs down and it measures the back pressure or resistance through your venting. So oh, wow. as the buildup increases, the back pressure increases, and a little red light will turn on when you need to get it cleaned. And so it kind of takes out the, Yes, do I need to get it cleaned or not? And oh, wow. and it, you know, there's possibilities where it can it'll send you a reminder. Hey, it's time to get that cleaned when it does. Do you have so, that on your web page? We do. Yeah, okay, so, so we're gonna share. If you go to our web page, we're gonna share a link to his web page, right? Is that what we're gonna on do? On Monday, yes. Oh, come Monday, yeah. So it'll yes. be this, over the week, not this weekend, guys. Monday, but we'll share a link to his page. So if you're interested in one of those, you click on my page, you can find his page, and then look it up from there. And then you're on Facebook as well. On Facebook and website and Google. If, if you search the okay. Chimney Doctor, you'll you'll find us. We'll we'll mm -hmm. pull up. But yep. Our, but we'll also share the link on our page, and we'll have a link probably on Facebook. I don't know how you do that, but yeah, we'll uh, have links on most everything. To okay, go there you the go, guys. So we'll have those links if you're looking for that. There we go. So was there another question? Yes. Somebody wants to know who is the best masonry person for doing a fireplace in Grand Junction. Or persons, uh, but, <laughs> and that depends because um, on the type of repair maybe that's being done. So or is this a new for a new fireplace. New fireplace. Um, so, so there's a lot of regulations in Grand Junction with new fireplaces, and you actually uh, they will not give you a permit to build a normal brick fireplace anymore because oh, really? they're not efficient enough. Anything wood burning has to be. Um, EPA approved, with, which currently it has to be 4.4 grams per hour or under. Um, and May 20th, it's still slated that it's going to come in with the new regs and all the EPA approved means it has to be under 2.0 grams. So it's cutting no, in half. Now explain the grams, what you're okay. talking about. Is that the, it's the... particulates in the air that comes out. And I, I couldn't tell you exactly how they measure the grams, mm -hmm. um, but it's how it's... many particulates are in the air that comes out of your exhaust pipe. So sort of like measuring emission test on your car kind of thing same thing on the fireplace yes. now and oh, so that's nice. so all the epa systems that are approved for installation in, in like the grand junction area and sometimes if you get out in the county um, they're not as worried about that and, and things can be built like that um and i don't have a particular recommendation if you're out there for anybody that that i know of particularly um we do have some there's some modular masonry fireplace systems that we can build and set up and then any mason can come and, and kind of brick around can it. brick around it um, we do have a mason that we have used quite a bit, and if anybody wants, they can send you a message or send us a message, and, and who does really beautiful work on fireplace fronts and things. So the, so the days of the old traditional brick floor and yellow brick backed fireplace are kind of gone, huh? Uh, to some extent, I mean, if your house has one, we can fix it and make it more efficient, make it safer. But if you're putting a new one into new construction, um, generally you'll go with a, a factory built um, insert basically kind of a factory built fireplace that sits in the wall kind of like a kind of like well, a gas fireplace it's but it's built for wood as brick line um, kind or is it and it, i mean it'll have a firebox with brick <coughs> lining in it and, okay and some of okay. those look a lot like a fireplaces but they will have doors on them usually okay and so then they'll run like a a, a wood stove to some extent but you can actually run uh, heat vents to reclaim heat from your fireplace behind your wall and up across your attic and dump heat into parts of your house. Okay, awesome, <coughs> that's cool to know. So, great question though. Yeah, so the rules are changing. And like Telluride, you can't, is it Telluride that you can't have fireplaces at all now really? Unless you buy so, one? Unless you, you know, buy one. <laughs> we were up there, so Telluride only has, there's 100 permits in the city and that's mm -hmm. it for fireplaces. And so if you want a fireplace, 
um, you buy a permit and you have to either demolish the whole chimney. Some people have actually bought a chimney permit with the chimney. They'll demolish it and rebuild it at their new house. So, so um, they, they take down an old chimney and build and a new build a new one out of, out of the old one, kind of. Or, or they'll or it. they'll do a whole new one. But there, so there's only a hundred. And I know when last time we were up there doing work up there, uh, one of the guys had done work on uh, Oprah's house up there because she has a house up there. Yeah. And she has ten of the hundred fireplace permits. Oh my wow. They range. They're all a hundred thousand plus to buy. And so if if you want one in Telluride. <laughs> You know, don't, let's hope Grand Junction never gets to that point, guys. Wow, that's um, that's crazy. But, but, but on the other side, by comparison, like Snowmass Village, they still allow everybody to have one fireplace, and it doesn't have to be EPA approved. They don't care, and so we have some bids out now that to put some in up there that aren't approved, and their ones Junction wouldn't even let put in. But Snowmass Village is like, oh yeah, one per household. It's just up the mountain, isn't no it? No problem. Yeah, it's just know? up the mountain, kind of from Telluride, right, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, well, yeah. it's up from uh, Aspen. Okay, after a little bit. Okay, yeah. You know, so, so every rules are a little bit different around the area. Check with your local codes before you do anything. I guess really yes, <laughs> call call or call a, a, a chimney guy that knows. <laughs> so yeah. So all right. Uh, there, is there another question on there? No, that is it. Will you tell us how people can get a hold of you though? Your number and yes. Can I tell you one other thing too? I forgot yeah, to mention. I was just thinking about um, another thing to to have looked at is if you have a, a furnace or a boiler or a water heater even, that vents into a masonry chimney. Um, it's actually a very common thing we do is reline those because what happens is when, especially if you have a chimney that was used for coal or wood, um, all the soot and creosote on the walls, when the condensate from your furnaces, the, the product that's in it, when it condenses inside your flue, it's a, it's a water vapor basically, and when it mixes, it actually will eat away clay flue tiles, eat away brick lining, and so we'll get into those and find that the clay tiles are all broken when we do a video inspection and that there's actually gaps into the chimney that lead into the home. And so if it were ever plugged up top, it would actually pump carbon monoxide into the house. And that's real common um, with older houses. Yes, especially if you have old houses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like downtown Grand Junction area would be a really key area where that would happen a lot. Ex extremely. So we, we'd highly recommend if you have furnaces or boilers that are in a masonry system and... Um, so, yeah, I mean, that's that. And, and okay. get, as far as getting hold of us, you want to say first? Somebody's wanting to <laughs> call you. Always. Yeah. So you do, you, do the, you do brick chimneys, you do gas, you do pellet, you do dryer vent work. And is there anything else that we didn't cover? That's, that covers I the big basics, I think. that about basics, that I think. covers yeah. all the basics. Thing. Yeah. All right. Well, awesome. So, like she was asking, how does people get a hold of you? Um, if you'd like to get a hold of us, uh, we're the Chimney Doctor. You can find us online. If you do a search, our phone number is 970 234 3330, you're 970-234-3330, um, or just type chimney.doctor, spelled out in the search bar. There's no .com or .net, just chimney.doctor, and, and we'd be happy to, to take a look at what you have and, and just give you our honest opinion and, and, and help you make the right choice for your family. There you go, guys. So there's there's that. And like I said, uh, if you go to mightymanhandyman.com next Monday, this Monday coming up, we will have a link to his site as well. And same on the Facebook page, and you can get it, get a hold of them that way too. And so, yeah. So, guys, if you got chimneys, I highly, uh, you know, uh, suggest calling and getting inspected. Come May, especially, yeah. yeah and right. if and if I'm ever on your roof, guys, and I'm up there like doing your swamp color, doing some shingles, I always walk over. I just look at your chimney, and if I see cracks or anything like that, just to me go, eh. I'll take a picture. I'll show it to you, and. I'll say, hey, you might get this inspected sooner than later. And so I'll refer you to him from now on um, to uh, come out and get it looked at. So, but yeah, I always do that. If I'm on your roof for anything, looking, I will go over and look at your chimney. I'll walk around your roof, look at your shingles too. So I look at everything while I'm up there because most homeowners hardly ever get on the roofs. So I just, if I'm on your roof for anything, it's a free inspection for me. I'll walk around. And if I see any red flags, I'll let you know. So. And you can call. The, the chimney, chimney doctor. doctor. <laughs> mm -hmm, that's right. Well, Seth, so, thanks for having me out. Oh, it was a pleasure having you out here. It's, yeah, I learned some new stuff today, so that's great. I, you know, I'm always glad to learn new things. I always want to, you know, educate myself too. So, it's been a fun interview with you, and and we hope to see you around. So, actually, I see him around all the time. I see his trucks everywhere. But <laughs> so, guys, oh, how many trucks do you have running? Uh, we got two to three trucks that are out, and we, I mean, we go, you know, we go to Moab and up to Aspen and Telluride, and we're kind of. 
we go all over the place, so we're so pretty busy. You cover a pretty good hundred mile radius, maybe from here. Yeah, at least. probably. Yeah, you know, so there. That's good to know. I was like, how far does he go? Yeah, so hundred mile radius, guys. There so you go. So call early. And so we, we like staying in town, though. So. <laughs> yeah, but if you're in Moab and you're watching this, he might come out. There's a. It's, that's a long drive, though. <laughs> but there you go, guys. So hey, we'll talk to y'all later. Have a great weekend, everybody. We're gonna go uh, get some food here, I think, in a little bit, and have a wonderful weekend. And we hope you do too. Talk to y'all later. Bye. Have a great day.